Hey everybody, welcome to mini beginner's crash course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode 12, we learned about the multi-match query and how this query can accommodate multiple contexts of a user's search. In today's episode, we'll talk about more advanced queries that could handle multifaceted questions. To do that, we'll cover the bool query and talk about how must and must not clauses can be used with the bool query. Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off from episode 12. I have two windows open. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part three repo, and I've scrolled down to combine query section. So let's recap. Today, we're learning about the bool query and the must and must not clauses of this query. And the reason why we're learning this is to create a great search experience for their users. And a part of that is to provide relevant answers that the user is searching for. When we're searching for an answer, a lot of the time we're asking a multifaceted question. For example, let's say we're using a news headlines app and we're searching for political headlines about Michelle Obama published before the year 2016. To answer this question, we need to write three different queries. One, querying headlines about Michelle Obama. Two, looking for Michelle Obama headlines from the politics category. And three, querying headlines published before the year 2016. So how do we combine all of these queries to answer our question? Well, one of the ways to do that is by running a bool query. So let's scroll down to that section. Now with this query, not only can you combine multiple queries into one request, you can further specify Boolean clauses to narrow down your search results. So this query might seem complicated at first, but I'm going to break this down and break it down even further. So let's scroll down to the syntax of the bool query. Now a bool query starts with query, then bool. And this query offers four clauses that you could choose from. These are must, must not, should, and filter. And to help you understand this, I'm going to explain these clauses in the context of resume screening. So we all have applied for jobs before, and each company has specific criteria they're looking for in a candidate. And they need an efficient way to narrow down the candidates, and a bool query can be used to do that. One way is to specify the criteria a candidate must meet to be considered for the role. These criteria or queries are specified under the must clause. Now, it would also be helpful to specify what they don't want in a candidate. And these criteria or queries are specified under the must not clause. Another thing we could add is a nice to have criteria. Not having these qualities don't exclude a candidate, but the ones that do match these criteria will be on the short list for an interview. And these criteria or queries are specified under the should clause. Now, lastly, the company may want to filter more candidates based on whether they fit into a yes or no category. For example, the company may not want to relocate someone, so they only want candidates who are currently in the desired city. A candidate is either in or not in the city they're hiring in, so candidates can be filtered into either yes or no category. This is what queries under the filter clause are used for. Only the ones that are filtered into the yes category will be returned as hits. To recap, we just covered four clauses you could use with a bool query. All of these clauses are optional, and you can mix and match these clauses to accommodate your goal. And it also doesn't matter in which order they appear either. So let's go over how you could use must and must not clauses. To do so, we're gonna use the news headlines index and go back to our Michelle Obama example now, Michelle Obama's sphere has a lot of initiatives, 
and she's known as a role model for many things from empowerment to parenting to fashion. And there's so many multifaceted questions we could ask about her. But first, we need to understand what types of Michelle Obama news headlines are in our data set. Because that will help us decide what type of questions we could ask. One way to understand that is by searching for categories of news headlines that mention Michelle Obama. To do this, we'll have to send a combination of query and aggregations request. So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. This request is almost identical to the one we sent in episode 9 when we're looking for categories in our data set. So I won't go over it line by line, but essentially we're asking for a summary of categories that Michelle Obama is mentioned in. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. Now go to line 10 and click on this downward arrow to minimize hits. And you'll be able to access an aggregations report, which we named category mentions. And if you look under buckets, you'll see a list of all categories that mention Michelle Obama. And as suspected, she's mentioned in various categories, such as politics, black voices, and weddings even. At this point, what we could search for is so vast, so we need to narrow down our focus a bit. So let's scroll down to the must clause section, then down to example. So Michelle Obama is a political figure, so maybe we would find something interesting if we look up political news headlines that feature Michelle Obama. This consists of two queries, one that queries all news headlines that mention Michelle Obama, and the other queries Michelle Obama headlines under the politics category. Now, in order for us to get relevant search results, both of these queries must be true. So in this case, we'll use the must clause. So this is the bool query that we're sending, where all hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the field headline. It should also match the term politics in the field category. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that we get 45 hits. And if you look at the hits, you'll see that all hits have Michelle Obama in the field headline and is categorized under politics. When we ran this bull query with a must clause, we only got 45 hits. Well, maybe we're missing out on a lot of interesting headlines because we're only focusing on politics. Now, we do want to know what non-political things she has been up to, but let's say we're not really interested in her wedding. So how do we grab all Michelle Obama headlines except for the ones about her wedding? Now, this is a scenario where both must and must not clauses come in handy. So let's scroll down to the must not clause section, then down to example. We just learned how to use a must clause. Now we're going to add a must not clause to it. So here we're sending a bull query and the hits must match the phrase Michelle Obama in the field headline. However, the hits must not match the term weddings in the field category. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that our recall is much better. We have 203 hits versus the 45 we got with the must clause. And if you look at all the documents, you'll see the Michelle Obama in the field headline and all the hits will be uh, from various categories except for the wedding category. So if you take a look, this document is from the category politics. This one from uh, category taste, black voices, and etc.
This mix of must and must not clauses allowed us to look at a greater number of news headlines, yet it still gave us the flexibility to exclude certain categories. All right, so we just learned about the bool query, which allows you to combine multiple queries into one request. We also learned about the must and must not clauses to further narrow down our search results. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack Part 3. So Part 3 is a full-length workshop where I talk about advanced search queries designed to search text fields. We also talk about how we could build a combination of queries to answer complex questions. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Search in Kibana.